We are back for another Free Agent Friday. Today we have Cassidy Koch with me, and uh, thanks for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me and for uh, starting this Free Agent Friday. <laughs> yeah, no, hopefully it'll help get some exposure. Um, you've got a great background, so let's dive right in. You know, Tell us where you went to school and what your major was. Sure. So I went to the University of West Florida, and I have a communications major with an emphasis in PR and a minor in Spanish. What got you into sports? Um, a mix of different things. I grew up in, around sports, my family. Uh, I loved going to sporting events, and um, it just seemed like a really great place to, to have a career. And so with that, I also have an entertainment background, which parallel a lot more than I actually thought they would, uh, which has made for um, some success on my end. So when you, while you were in college, did you do any internships at all in sports or entertainment? I did not in sports and entertainment. I actually didn't really figure out that I wanted to work in sports until after I graduated college. So I did an internship okay. in community relations with an aquarium. And okay. then realized that I could do community relations in sports. Uh, the, the Pensacola Blue Wahoos were um, in the city where I went to school. And so I kind of got a taste for that through some friends that did some internships there. And it really piqued my interest and said, wow, I can work in sports, be in a front office and have a career out of that. And that's kind of what piqued my interest. And so what was kind of your first, you know, um, jump into entertainment and sports? So on the entertainment side, I am a fourth generation American circus performer. I have nice. traveled around the United States performing with Ringling Brothers Circus, um, a lot of other small shows, fairs at the state and county level, uh, doing a variety of different things. Uh, I am an aerialist as well as an announcer. Um, I have set up and tear down shows. I have sold tickets. I've run lights and music. Uh, just about everything. Like minor league sports, so, everything. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of ironic. It was the perfect parallel when my first internship um, in sports was with Richmond Flying Squirrels. And I got to be the MC, one of our in-game hosts. And I was pretty much doing the exact same thing um, in the entertainment industry, just in sports. And it was a really amazing experience. I absolutely loved my two years in Richmond, and it was just fun to have all those parallels and still kind of get to perform, if you will, um, and kind of have both of those. <laughs> did you do both at the same time? Um, actually, I did uh, take uh, uh, some PTO and go work a fair with my mom uh, at the end of my first season in Richmond, but I kind of say that I'm semi-retired uh, because <laughs> it's a lot. The, the sports industry is obviously a lot of hours and a lot to do, and um, to stay in shape and, and all of that and the time that I would need to do some other shows just didn't really make sense. And so in college, I, I did both. I, the summers I performed and then I would go back to school uh, in the fall. And so, like I said, kind of taking that little bit of hiatus from show business and really focusing on the sports industry and creating a career out of it. Um, but it, the entertainment industry still has my heart. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds, and it sounds like, you know, it's a family, the family business, so. So like what, um, so you got out of, out of the, the show business stuff. Um, tell me a little bit more about your first, um, your internship with the rascals or the squirrels, right? I'm sorry. I'm thinking of another baseball team. I was just talking to somebody, uh, with, with the flying squirrels. Yeah, so I was our community relations intern. So coming in, doing everything from our reading program and art contest, um, baseball camps, as, far, as well as appearances, both for our mascot Nutsy, um, staff volunteering and player appearances. So I had a hand in, in all of that, um, which was a lot of fun. And then I also was a part of our promotions team and I was able to, uh, over the course of the two years, help plan our theme nights, um, help book some entertainment for those. And then I ended up um, doing some, a little bit of MC work my first year as an intern. And when I got hired on full-time at the end of my first season, I became um, one of two full-time um, on-field MCs for, for the squirrels, as well as kind of, like I said, helping plan theme nights, um, 
booking entertainment, talent, things of that nature, and all while doing the community relations um, role as well. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Obviously, minor league baseball is a lot of hours and whatnot, but game day is probably one of my favorite parts about working in sports. I just, I thrive on that. Being an entertainer and a performer, that's just kind of one of my favorite parts is to get on the mic and announce and entertain fans and just watch them have a great time. Yeah, it's, it's rewarding for sure. And when you're with the, uh, the squirrels, any programs that, um, you know, stand out to you that you were part of that uh, um, you helped develop or create or run? Yeah, our, we do our Go, um, Go Nuts for Reading program where we um, reach out to, I believe um, my second year, we had about 80 schools participate um, from nice. around the surrounding counties and they're challenged to read eight books and they're given a, a custom bookmark. And if they finish those eight books, they're invited to one of four reading nights at, at a ball game. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to be able to go out and we'd go into those schools and do an assembly um, and kind of help promote and get the kids reading and then um, invite them to a game. And we had some, some really amazing um, numbers and attendance um, over those two years and just awesome to watch it grow and to see the impact that it has on the community to get these kids reading and involved and also get, allow them to enjoy a night at the ballpark as their reward. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I saw that on your resume. I was hoping you were going to bring that one up. So that's good. And then, so I saw, so you went from the squirrels to back, back to Florida in Tampa for the XFL. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah. So I was approached um, about an opening with the XFL um, at the, at the end of my second season in the off season. And I had no intention of, of leaving or going anywhere, but it just kind of presented a really unique opportunity in my mind and, um, and a chance to get closer to home and, and be near my family at that time. Um, but the XFL was, was a really amazing and unique experience. So I ended up being our business operations specialist, which um, when we got started ended up as being in charge of um, our game presentation. And so I worked alongside um, my, my boss and we basically uh, planned all of those theme nights. It's very similar to what I did uh, help do in Richmond and creating everything as far as game presentation was concerned. I wrote run, a run of shows, I wrote scripts for the unfortunately two home games that we had. Um, and then I was also our field producer. So I was down on the field running, running things, making sure everything was going smoothly. And it was really an amazing experience to be a part of that startup league. Uh, we had an amazing team in Tampa. Everybody worked together so well. And I think we had a really phenomenal product and our, our fans were incredible and seemed to really, really enjoy it. Um, it's just a bummer the way that it all came to be, but it was a really incredible experience those couple months that I had there. And I definitely learned a lot. Yeah, no, I think the XFL and I know some, some people that were with the, um, some of the teams definitely, I thought it was well done. It's, it, it sucks. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, everything happened the way it did because it, it was building, I thought, and, uh, entertaining and I think you guys all did a good job. So did you do in-game hosting there as well, or was it just more on the behind the scenes stuff? It was in conversation. They ended up um, utilizing someone else to allow me to be on the field and, and run as our field producer. But at, um, at training camp in Houston, we had four um, essentially rehearsal games where each team, we, they had a matchup. And so I actually got to play as our on-field MC for that game because some of the other teams flew in their MCs and we were not able to. So I got to play along a little bit and be the host for our rehearsal game. But um, uh, I mean, when you're doing all the other stuff behind the scenes, it's, I mean, people don't realize everything that goes into it. There's so much work and detail. So I thought that might've been a little much if uh, you had to do all that. So, yeah, so that's good. So what is your, what's your dream job then? What, what's your ideal job? I think, I think the XFL was a good start at me trying to find that. And I think that it's in that wheelhouse of game presentation and helping create and run run game presentation for for a team. Um, I have the experience of not only um, 
kind of having that performance side and knowing what fans and audiences are kind of looking for and um, and the discipline to, to to manage all of that. And so it was a really, the, the XFL was a great start for me to cultivate that and say, hey, this is something I really like and I think I'm pretty good at. And I just am kind of continuing to grow with that. And I think I've kind of found where, where I want to be with that. At least the direction. That's good. Mm-hmm. What's So what is your biggest um, asset that you'll bring to a new club? I think one of my biggest assets is, is being versatile, being able to adapt to any situation in any scenario. I have traveled around the country and set up circuses and, and, and all of that in, in very unique situations. I've um, you know been with a couple different teams now, and I really just am able to adapt and overcome in so many different situations. And I feel like um, that's a huge asset to bring to the table and something that um, my future team uh, will get from me. How about on the, the weakness side or something that you need to work on the most? I think I uh, at times like to spread myself a little thin and help out everywhere that I can and then end up having to uh, work a little bit harder on my end of things to get to get that done. So trying to find that balance of helping and, and getting my own stuff done. And then how about a fun fact about you? Now, you can't throw in the circus thing because you already did. So it's got to be something else. Oh, man, that's usually (laughs) my go-to fun fact. Um, I will go. I studied abroad um, in Spain when I was in college. Like I said, I minored in Spanish and I'm still kind of continuing to um, enhance my my language as I progress, but uh, I spent three weeks in Salamanca, Spain, studying and living with the host family, and uh, it was nice. such a fun and, and really cool experience. When you were uh, performing with the circus, did you um, travel outside the U.S., or was it all in U.S. travel? For me, it was all in the United States. Um, we have, my family has animals, and so we have to drive everywhere with the truck and trailer, so the gotcha. majority of the stuff we do it is in the United States. Nice. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of space out there. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of good places to travel to still. Absolutely. Well, no, I want to thank you for, for coming on. We'll get um, this shared out to everybody and try to do what we can to, to help you find that next gig. I really appreciate you giving me the time and opportunity for this, Andrew.